Until this point, we focused on integers. We've looked at positive integers, negative integers, how to represent them, how to, how to perform arithmetic on them. Now I'm going to shift my focus to floating point values. So a floating point register is used to represent a large set of rational numbers. And I'm giving you one example uh, rational number over here. This is in decimal format and it's in the normalized scientific notation, which means that there is exactly one non-zero digit to the left of the decimal point. So this represents a magnitude, which is three times 10 to the power zero plus five times 10 to the power minus one. And that whole summation is multiplied by 10 to the power nine. I can also use a similar notation for binary numbers. So here's a binary number using the normalized scientific notation, where there's exactly one non-zero digit to the left of this decimal point or binary point as, as the case is over here. And then a whole string of zeros and ones after the decimal point, and then multiplied by two to the power minus five. So this represents a value of one times two to the power zero, which is nothing but one plus zero times two to the power minus one plus one times two to the power minus two, then zero times two to the power minus three and so on. And then finally, one times two to the power minus six. And the summation of all of those terms is then multiplied by two to the power minus five. Now, there are many different formats that you can use to express these numbers. And the IEEE organization came up with a committee that then defined the IEEE 754 standard for how these floating point numbers should be represented. And the reason to have a standard is so that you know data produced by one computer can then be easily interpreted by another computer or an experiment that you run on one machine can be reproduced in a different machine, right? So everybody agrees on exactly how this set of rational numbers should be represented within the hardware. So let's look at some of the basics of the IEEE 754 standard. And I'll add more and more layers of complexity as we move forward. So what I'm trying to do here is use a 32-bit register to represent a large set of rational numbers. On the left, you'll see a sign bit. This tells me if the number is positive or negative. So earlier when we had discussed integers, we had looked at the sign and magnitude representation and we had discarded it because it led to additional conversion steps while performing arithmetic. But in case of floating point numbers, this turns out to be a fairly convenient notation. Then there are two more fields, one for the exponent term and one for the fraction term. So let's go back to uh, the example I had on the previous slide, which was one zero one times two to the power minus five. Okay, so we always know that a normalized number is going to have a one before the binary point. So we don't really need to waste any bits to represent this, right? This is kind of implicitly always going to be there. All right, so we don't really represent this value over here. But the digits or the, or the bits that come after the binary point get placed in this fraction field. So I can have as many as 23 bits over there. And then the exponent term, this minus five, gets placed over here in this eight bit field. So since the exponent term uses eight bits, it can be used to represent you know, numbers from zero to 250, 255. Or in this case, since I want to represent both very large numbers and very small numbers, I'm going to represent, I'm, I'm going to use those eight bits to represent this range minus 127 up to plus 128. I can also do other variations, but this is what the IEEE 754 standard dictates. So the total value in this, in this 32 bit register is basically shown over here, minus one to the power S, right? So if S is one, it's a negative number. If S is zero, it's a positive number, times one, which is that implicit one over here, plus the value in this fraction field, that's these bits over here, and that sum multiplied by two to the power of whatever is in the exponent field. Okay, so now, you know, why did we choose to use eight bits here and 23 bits here? You know, why not use more or less bits? So let's look at, you know, what you get with eight bits. So if I'm using eight bits to represent the exponent value, then I can represent numbers which are roughly as big as two to the power 128 and numbers that have magnitude as small as two to the power minus 127, right? So how many real numbers or how many rational numbers exist in this range? It's obviously an infinite number. And I'm only given 32 bits in my register, right? And with 32 bits, I can only represent two to the power 32 different values. 
So this means that in this vast range, I'm representing a small set of 2 to the power 32 rational numbers. All right. Now, supposing I had, so this was with, you know, 8 bits for my exponent. Supposing I had 10 bits for my exponent, right? That means my range basically increases. I can go as large as 2 to the power 512. So numbers with magnitude as large as that and numbers with magnitude as small as 2 to the power minus 511, right? So this range is obviously much wider, but again, I can only represent 2 to the power 32 numbers in this range, okay? So it's still the same set of numbers, but the range is wider. I, I lose a little bit of precision because the number of fraction bits is now lower. I only have 21 fraction bits. So essentially the spacing between some of these numbers increases. So that's the trade-off in choosing the right exponent value. And the IEEE standard essentially picks a sweet spot saying that, you know, 8 bits is good enough. It gives me a sufficiently wide range and it gives me sufficiently good precision as well. Okay, and in the next slide, I'll also talk about double precision. So before I do that, let's just go through this exercise. Let's actually, you know, kind of state what the largest and the smallest numbers are. Let me also give you the warning that the numbers I'm going to produce on this slide are not quite correct. Later, as you see more details of the IEEE 754 standard, you'll realize that the largest and the smallest numbers are actually different, right? But I think it's useful to go through this exercise because it gives us a sense for what goes in each of these fields. Okay, so the largest magnitude number is basically, you know, one plus the fraction bits all being ones, right? So if you add them up, you get a number which is not quite one, but very close to one, right? So let's just roughly say that all of these added together gives me the value one. So this multiplied by the largest exponent, which we said was two to the power 128. So this is a fairly big number. The smallest magnitude number is going to be the implicit one that I mentioned, plus the fraction bits all being zero times the smallest exponent, which is two to the power minus 127. So I kind of spell that out over here. Now, if I ever want to represent a number that is larger than this, right? So let's say I'm doing some math and the result is a number that is larger than this largest number. That's referred to as overflow. So with 32 bits and with this convention, there's no way I can represent a larger number than this in that 32 bit register. If my arithmetic produces a result that is smaller than this, then that is referred to as underflow. And so again, you know, this 32 bit register is not capable of representing that value. If I do want to go beyond that range, then I need to use what is referred to as the double precision format. And this essentially uses two 32-bit registers to represent that value. So I'm using 64 bits. And like before, I use one bit for the sign, 11 bits for the exponent, and 52 bits for the fraction. Okay, and it seems like we've only increased the exponent by a small amount. But note that, you know, here I can represent numbers as large as 2 to the power 128. Here I can represent numbers as large as 2 to the power 1024. So this is actually much, much larger. It gives you a much wider range. It also gives you higher precision because I'm using 52 fraction bits. So I've gone over the very basics and I'll add some more details in the next few videos and go through a few more examples.